welcome to the Alwine Engines YouTube channel. Today is Tool Talk, and specifically, we're going to talk about torque wrenches, the clicker type, the deflecting beam type, and one of my favorites, the stretch gauge type. All right, after the break, we'll get right to it. All right, thanks for coming back, and let's get into the theory quickly. You know, what is torque? And that is, I like to think of it as a twisting force. Uh, that's what it is in classical mechanics. Um, think of the crankshaft twist, the twisting force, that's the torque. The formula is the force times the distance equals the torque, the distance in the lever. So this is... I'm going to apply a twisting force right here to this fastener. This is 12 inches a foot on the lever and a force of, let's say, 20 pounds. That's 20 times one foot. That's 20 foot pounds. As simple as that. And a disclaimer real quick. Fasteners are best measured in their clamping force by their stretch with a stretch gauge, but we're not talking stretch gauge today. We're talking torque wrenches because that's the practicality. If you can get a stretch gauge on, like, say, a rod bolt, uh, do it. I'm going to go over to the bench top and get a little more in detail about torque wrench. Simply, there's a couple types, and this is the best one to show how they work. Uh, a beam that bends and an indicator bar that stays in one place calibrated to read on this face here, this, uh, let's call it a meter face, foot pounds and Newton meters. This handle has a fixed point. That's why the handle wobbles so that you can pull on it and it's going to pull at the exact fixed point. This is probably 24 inches, two feet. What is happening when you pull, this bigger bar is bending and the top bar is staying in place and you're reading out the foot-pounds at the gauge, 60 foot-pounds. I was probably pulling 30 pounds of force there because 30 times 2 equals 60 foot-pounds. The other type, most common, are these uh, toggle action or clicker type and, or micrometer. People, you know, you'll hear it called different things. Micrometer because it it's acting on a spring in here, and you set the load of the spring by dialing in this dial that looks like a micrometer. So let me dial this to 60 foot-pounds. Okay, about right there. So these also, when, when the bar bends, the internal mechanism then gets to that set point and clicks. So when this pulls enough where the bar bent, the internal mechanism again pushed against this spring in here and it pushed it past a, a lever or a pawl in there. Hope that makes sense. Okay, there's also another type the strain gauge type, uh, electronic. Uh, here. The strain gauge or electronic type. This is like a $70 strain gauge that many people now are uh, sort of using it in place of a torque wrench. Uh, it's a pretty good idea. I'm going to set this to a peak. And I'm going to set it down to 40 so it's easier to pull. This will show the peak and it will beep a little bit before. It goes on upside down, yeah. All right, so I am going to pull on this and see what it reads when it gets to 40. Okay, it's 40 on the bar, 37 on this. All right, let's see what this, let's reset that. Let's see what this guy reads. I have it already preset at 40 foot-pounds. Loaded the spring up 
on here and see where this clicks on the spring. 40.3. That is a neat little tool. All right, what affects accuracy when you're torquing? Well, a bunch of things. Uh, the number one thing is the cleanliness of the fastener, the bolt, and the dirt down in the um, in the material, the thread holes, lube on the th on the fastener. You know, it needs to be the proper lube if you're going to get an accurate torque reading. The approach or the technique uh, when you're approaching torque value, uh, you don't want to jerk hard on it. You won't be assured of uh, the, the actual fastener being stretched or in there right. You do want to approach it as slow as possible. Your pulling angle is another thing. You, if you're, you need to maintain an even plane to just think of twisting the fastener in a actually 90 degree, you know, perpendicular. And if you're pulling down against it, you're binding it. Or in other words, don't bind the fastener. Counter torque is another oh, term. Counter torque was taught to me when I was in the nuclear Navy as a machinist mate. When it's a, it's has to do with binding of the fastener. So if you're pulling a, you know, trying to pull 70 foot pounds with two hands, this is kind of bending and binding against the fastener. If as all possible, push against this head counter to the pulling force. So that's the counter torque and that'll keep the fastener twisting properly. The parallax basically viewing angle affects the technique because if you have one of these types and you can't look straight down on the gauge, it's going to be difficult to have an accurate reading. You're looking at a parallax here. So that's an inaccuracy. It's easy to see the zero there. It's harder to see it that way. Another thing that affects the accuracy of torque wrenches is how many times it's bent, or the heat cycles, how much time, how many times you over torque. Because remember, this beam is what's doing the bending and measuring the torque. So that'll affect its calibration. Heat, cold, dropping, work hardening of it too much bending of the torque wrench, that affects accuracy. This is about a 30 year old torque wrench and it's reading low on the um, higher scales. It reads real accurate, 20 and 30 foot pounds. So this is good. This helps me do when I'm down into the 20s. I use this thing for that. But it, I guess it's been work hardened over the years. So not as accurate. Okay, the last thing I want to talk about is extensions, it, vertical or horizontal. There is some effect and there is no effect. Black Forest Racing, go to that YouTube channel and check out the effect that extensions have on torque. I'm going to say it, they have, it has no effect, but uh, horizontal does have an effect. I set up a funny little thing here that they, uh, well, that didn't work. All right, if you use a crow's foot, that will have an effect. This is actually, we'll call it a horizontal offset. There's uh, math formulas if you do have to use a crow's foot, and so it's not the end of the world. Look it up on the internet, the math formulas. But this is changing the distance to the fastener. So if if you have to do something like this and you're, and you're torquing a fastener, just plug and chug the formula and know that it will be inaccurate directly. It needs to go through a formula. All right, let me talk about one last thing before I close, and that is the learning. In preparation for this segment, the Torque Wrench, I studied a lot. I went to YouTube, I went to Wiki. I don't know everything. I've been in mechanics or around mechanics for many, many years, and I started in the 80s in the nuclear Navy. I was a machinist mate. That's where I got the foundation keep my eyes open and try to learn it. So that's what we're doing here. And that's why I have this YouTube channel. If anyone has any tips or knowledge to further this topic of torque wrenches, please put them in the comments because we're here to learn. Know that I don't know everything. And it, this is a learning topic.
topic and a learning style of YouTube channel. So in the future, we're gonna to continue to learn. Also, with that being said, please like and share this video. Subscribe, please. I'm trying to raise my subscription count, the subscriber count. This channel is gonna be here for a long time. Your subscription is gonna help that. So keep your torque wrenches clean and minimize the bending, the dropping. It'll keep them living long and it'll keep them more accurate. All right, that's it for today. Make sure you check the links over here. Some of the places that I learned about these torque wrenches, check them out. From Elwine Engines, this is Carl Elwine. Take care. <laughs>